How's it going, Teal Boys? Today, I've got an awesome new tool to show you guys created by the Bleeding Red and Arrowhead of the college football revamped team. Uh, this is going to completely change the way that dynasties play out, uh, and there's more on it to come. Now, this is currently a work in progress, so if you do have any issues with it, um, please head to the college football revamped Discord uh, there's going to be a ton of links down in the description on this video, so make sure that you go check them out. Uh, but go to the appropriate channel if you find a bug or something and make sure that it gets reported. Uh, and maybe give a shout out or a big thanks to these guys because what they've done is pretty incredible. So we're going to start off with how to get it. Uh, this link's going to be down in the description. It'll send you to this GitHub page. Uh, and this is going to be the readme. Make sure that you read through this. It'll explain how everything works. Uh, and how to use the tool. Um, so make sure that you read the README. Always very useful, a ton of great information there. Uh, but to get the download, you're gonna go ahead and click on releases over on the right side there. And then you can find the most up-to-date release and then scroll down to the assets tab. Click on that and click on the zip file. From there, you'll open up the zipped folder. You'll extract the executable and you will run it. Make sure that you install it in the default place that it tries to install to. Uh, it'll create its own spot in your program files and uh, you need to do that so that things actually work. If you don't, there's a really high likelihood of things breaking um, and you obviously don't want that. So when you boot up the tool, this is the main menu that you're going to get. So we'll just start right away. Um, we're going to create a new dynasty folder uh, and we're just going to call this one test because, well, that's exactly what it is. And then let's go ahead and pick this green color because, you know, I'm going to choose the ducks for our test dynasty. So we will hit create and you get to this and you can see there's four modules. Now, the guys that have made this have stated that there are plans to add more to this, um, including, for instance, we know that they're working on one to change the starting year of your dynasty. So instead of when you start a dynasty, uh, it being 2013, you can start it in 2020, 2021, you know, so on and so forth. So that's uh, a work in progress, as is all of this. But we can just start by, uh, well, we'll load up a new dynasty, I guess. So I've created a new dynasty. Uh, this can be used on new and existing dynasties. So if you have one, uh, you can still use it. Uh, we will most likely be using this with the Teal Boys in the next offseason. Uh, but the first two modules that we're going to see are the NFL draft declaration and the player progression. Uh, and just below those, it says players leaving stage and training results stage. Uh, those are the parts of the off season that you will need to have the game in to get these modules to work. So I will go ahead and sim through this first season to the NFL draft declaration and we can show you how the first module works. So we have arrived at the players leaving stage of the off season, which means we can get into the first part of the, uh, the first module, the draft declaration. So the way that this works is that it changes the system in the game that determines if a player is likely to declare for the draft or not, and also what position in the draft they will be drafted. Uh, it removes, I believe, uh, like physical requirements. So if you have like a 99 overall quarterback who's a little bit too short, I think that it removes, uh, you know, that restriction that's in the game that prevents players that are incredible from being drafted. Uh, so that's a nice fix. And it also uh, makes it more likely for uh, like juniors and whatnot to declare so that they leave early, but it can also make it so that uh, a higher rated player uh, who's projected to be drafted lower than you would expect, like a, say a 94 overall quarterback in the third round, uh, it's gonna make them more likely to come back and stay for a year to help increase their draft stock. Uh, so let's go ahead and load this up. Uh, we can see we are at the player's leaving stage. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on the draft declaration and then we will open our dynasty file. Now, this is the same file that you'll use in the playoff editor and all that jazz. So it's the USR data file for your folder in RPCS3. It's going to be located in the in the hard drive zero and then the home folder. Go through this, go to your save data and then find your save. Uh, for us, it's going to be the default file. 
Uh, and then from there, again, the USR data file, you'll go ahead and open that up and the tool will start working. Uh, these modules should not take a long time to load unless you have a really bad computer. So uh, if it's stuck for a long time, you might want to try to look and see if maybe you loaded the wrong file or if something else isn't working. Uh, and I believe there should be some baked in errors to tell you if things went wrong. So uh, let me just go ahead and minimize this real quick. Let's take a look real quick at what the base game says for who's going to be leaving. Um, right now it says there is, let's see, Diamador Lenore and Jordan Scott are just graduating and projected to be drafted. Uh, and we have two juniors in Johnny Johnson and Travis Dye declaring early. Now, the tool has changed that. Uh, Lenore is going. Johnny Johnson is now staying. Um, Jordan Scott is still going. And uh, what else? Uh, Tyler Shuck is now projected for the seventh round where before he wasn't. So things have changed. Uh, we can see that the Ducks are a four-star team. Ten players leaving. No transfers. Four are entering the draft, and none of them are considered early enrollees uh you can click on different things to sort it by year by overall by position and by status um so that's pretty cool and one thing that i really like is that if you just go ahead and click on the team name you can pick whatever team you want so we could look at alabama and see uh all the players that they have going or we could have some fun and you can just go straight to the ncaa and see everybody who's leaving so every first round player that is declaring uh these are all the guys that would be leaving early and then if we go a ways in uh we can find these are all the first round seniors that are just graduating and going into the draft so a very cool way to go through and see uh, how all those players work so once you have loaded this, it has automatically saved. You just need to reload your dynasty. Uh, so we'll go back to the dynasty hub and I'm just gonna go ahead and back out of the dynasty and then we can load straight back into it. Uh, and if we go to our, not to our coaching changes, if we go to our players leaving, uh, we can see that this does change. So Tyler Shuck is now uh, projected seventh round. Johnny Johnson is staying and Travis Dye isn't even on the board anymore. So uh, that's completely changed uh, and how that first module works. Now the second one is at the training results stage. So we can go ahead and sim forward towards that. And now that we are here, we can just go ahead and look at what the base game would do for training results. Now, this is so far, I think, the biggest change uh, that this uh, Dynasty tool provides. So we can just see right off the bat that uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, he'll be our example. He goes up four overall to a 98. Uh, but this is just absolutely mind blowing to me. So inside the game's files, every single player has a hidden uh, potential and discipline rating. And so these two ratings are combined with your school's academics, uh, facilities, pro potential and prestige, as well as your coaching prestige. So your head coach and both of your coordinators. All of this is jumbled together into a formula that determines uh, how much a player is going to uh, progress in the off season. And there's a chance now for a player to become an absolute stud over the off season and have a breakout year and go up as much as 12 overall or 12, uh, in a specific stat. But on the flip side, the tool also allows a player to become essentially a bust, uh, where they maybe don't take the off season seriously and they can actually regress and get worse, uh, and drop up to, I think it's seven overall either total or in a specific stat. Uh, so depending on the ratings of your school and your coaches, and then those two hidden uh, discipline and potential ratings, uh, a player is going to be put into a specific tier in this uh, algorithm, and then uh, it'll decide based off of that of how much they progress. So we saw that uh, Kayvon Thibodeau goes up four overall, uh, Michael Wright right below him goes up three overall. So we're going to load in the exact same file the exact same way as we just did. 
So we click on that player progression and we will open the dynasty file and load the exact same one in. Uh, and this one will take a little bit longer than the draft, but when it's done, uh, it's completely game changing. So this is now loaded in and we can see already there's a change. My KRI still goes up plus three to 96, but Kayvon Thibodeau only goes up plus one. Uh, we can scroll through, we can see Alex Forsyth goes up plus eight in his awareness. Um, so just awesome, plus 10 to ball carrier vision for Travis Dye. So uh, there's a, a chance for guys to completely skyrocket. Uh, if we want to sort by uh, players that have progressed the most or the least, we can click on the player uh, column. Uh, clicking on any of these will sort by said column. So uh, we didn't have any crazy breakout stars. Guys going up plus six is the most that we saw. Uh, if we click it again, we can see the most regression. We can see Jamal Hill went down four overall in the offseason which is crazy to me, and it, it completely changes everything. Uh, it makes things a little bit less predictable, I think, in terms of how your players are going to go, and it also means that there's a chance that you completely recruit a bust, so not every player uh, that you recruit at like 79 overall is going to become great. So it completely changes the way Dynasty works. Um, you can see all these uh, different ratings. Uh, those are what goes in towards that algorithm and again we can click on the team name and go look at another team so if we look at alabama uh all their stats pretty much are higher than the ducks uh, they only had one player go down one overall everybody else goes up including uh steven win or stefan win jr who goes up eight overall so completely game changing and again we can go up to the ncaa and just see who changes the most and we have a couple of guys nick turner uh, from Mississippi State and John Powell from UCF go up plus 12. So they've just become absolute studs over the offseason. This dude is a redshirt freshman and he's 87 overall. If he continues to progress like that, he's going to be an absolute monster. Um, you can search for certain players. Uh, so say you want to look for everybody you named Travis, you can just type in Travis and it's, uh, there you go. So again, once you've loaded in your file, it will have already saved to your dynasty. Uh, so all that you need to do with your dynasty is just back out and then completely reload it. And when you look at your training results, everything will have changed. Uh, so super, super simple to use. Uh, and now we can just bring the tool back up. My OBS is really not liking what I'm doing this right now, but uh, there's two more modules and they can be done whenever you don't have to be in your dynasty you don't really even have to load anything in uh it's the progression history in the draft history and before we look at these i'm actually going to sim through another year uh because well as they say you can look at the history of everything that has happened in your dynasty so long as you have this tool installed Alrighty, so I have simmed through a whole nother season and I've gone through both the draft declaration stage and the player progression stage, uh, which means that I can go and look at history. So uh, this is just fun in that uh, you can look back as your dynasty progresses and see everything that's happened with your players. So let's go in. So right off the bat, uh, we're going to look and see this is our 2013 draft class. It's cool to see, okay, this player did this, this player did this. Uh, and then if you want, you can just keep going through year by year. So we sim through another year and now we can go click on this uh, year tab and select the year that we want to look at. We can see uh, just how many more players ending up in the draft be, uh, than, than the last year. Uh, the Ducks, the first year they ended up six and six winning the Red Box Bowl. This year they went 13 and one losing the national championship. Uh, so just crazy to see all that. Uh, the same thing with the progression history. Uh, we have our 2013 stuff that we can look at, um, which is, you know, always fun to see how your players are progressing. And so again, we can see, okay, my Kale Wright went up six or three last year to a 96. And then the next year in 2014, I actually don't think he progressed. So he was a 96 plus three, and now he's just a 96. So he doesn't progress. Uh, and again, we can see, okay, well, uh, Steve Stevens, the fourth, goes up eight overall. He is the highest player. 
on the Ducks to do so. Uh, and we had Mace Funa and Josh Delgado losing overall, going down one and two respectively. And again, we can do this for every single team. If we want to look at Central Michigan, we can look at every every player that Central Michigan has had in their progression and their draft history. We can look at everybody in the entire NCAA. So in 2014, two players went down the maximum of seven. Uh, how about going up? Nobody hit that plus 12 in uh, in the second season. So that's very cool, but that's not it. Uh, I didn't mean to back out of that, but that's not it. You can look at entire classes and entire teams, uh, but beyond that, you can also just look at players and their entire history. So if we click on a player, it will bring up their player progression screen. This is for just this season. So maybe we pick somebody who has actually changed. How about Steven Jones? Uh, so we can see what they did in the 2014 offseason. Um, you know, plus 10 awareness. He had plus 7 to his run blocking and all that. It's very similar, like, to the scouting screen. Uh, but right next to this progression is a progression history tab. So we can actually click on that and look at how they changed between seasons. So just very cool. So he wasn't 80 overall the first year. He went up 3 in the first season. And then he goes up plus seven in the second season. You can look at every stat uh, and you can look back to players that aren't even on your team anymore if you've, you know, progressed that much. So that's just such an incredibly cool feature that allows you just to keep track of your dynasty a little bit more in depth. And uh, for me, I think that the changes in the way that the progression works is absolutely game changing. Now, there is one more thing that you can change. This will work with team builder teams. Uh, so if we go in and look at draft history, for example, the Ducks logo is the Ducks logo. Uh, but if you brought in a team builder team, it's not going to be showing that logo. It's going to be showing the logo of whatever team you replace. So if you click on custom logos, it will bring up this file, uh, which is in your app data. Uh, and it'll show you a text document with custom logo instructions. So if you load that up, It'll show you this, uh, and you're going to find the team that you want to replace. Uh, take your logo that you want in there, most likely a PNG, so you can have a transparent background and it'll look fine. Uh, and you're going to find the team on the list that you replaced, and you're going to name that photo whatever number it is, uh, and you're going to want it as a .png. So uh, you'll name it whatever file or whatever logo you're replacing to 74, for example, for Oregon. So I've gone ahead and loaded in a new logo for the Ducks. Uh, if we just go back to the uh, main menu and then load back in to our dynasty uh, when we go to our draft history now, uh, you can see that the Ducks logo has changed. And I don't know, I might be a little bit biased, but I would say that's a bit of an improvement. <laughs> and now to uh, get rid of the custom logo, you'll just go in and delete that photo uh, and it will revert back. Uh, currently, there is no way, if we go to the main menu, there is no way to delete a dynasty if you've added it to the tool. If you go to the settings, all that you can change is the color. You can't change the name, so uh, make sure that you have the name how you want it. But if you do just want to delete the file, uh, we can go ahead and go open up the custom logos. Uh, it'll bring up your file in the app data. You can just go app data roaming if you want to find it, but this is a nice, easy way to do it. So uh, you'll click on the NCA 14 Dynasty tool, just kind of back out a little bit. Uh, and instead of be going into the custom, you'll go into the Dynasty folder and you'll see test and you can just delete that. So if I had uh, another one in here that I didn't want or uh, after I finish this video and I want to load in the Teal Boys one, but I don't want that test one showing anymore, I'll come in and, and I will just uh, delete the test folder. So for now, that covers everything in this Dynasty tool. Again, it's a work in progress and there is supposedly plans to add uh, new modules. Like I said, there's the uh, potential change for the start of the Dynasty year, which is nice. So instead of uh, these showing 2013 and 2014 for your first two seasons, it could show 2021 and 2022. I'm uh, very excited for that. Uh, and I'm also curious to know uh, what you guys think would be good addition stuff that would be changing in the off season. Um, don't bother the creators of this. Don't go on discord or 
uh, Twitter or whatever and say, hey, can you add this? Uh, but you can tell me because I'm curious to know what you guys think would be cool. Um, and I think there's a couple of cool things that could be changed. Uh, the transfer system is one that would be awesome if it could be completely overhauled. Uh, everybody knows that uh, in 2013, when this game came out versus today, the transfer system in college football is completely different. Uh, if they could somehow figure out a way to do some sort of transfer portal magic, that would completely change the game. Uh, and it would be just adding on to the incredible features that are already in this. Um, and also maybe something to do with the coaching carousel. Uh, maybe a way to choose which coordinators you hire would be nice because well let's be honest there's nothing more frustrating than having two incredible coordinators one season and then having two level zero coordinators the next so uh i'm curious to know your guys's thoughts on what would be a cool addition uh so leave those down in the comments if you enjoyed this video please feel free to go down and hit the like button uh maybe subscribe for more videos like this or the coastal carolina teal boys dynasty that we've been working on and again if you want this uh, tool there's going to be links to it as well as links to the uh, creators the, you know the college football revamp discord if you have questions or bugs uh, so many links down in the description head down there check those out there's also going to be links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster uh, as well as links to my twitter and our community discord unfortunately though that's gonna have to be it for this video uh, thank you guys so much for watching my name is Goonmaster, you guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night, or have a good morning, we'll see you later. Adios!